Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today I'm going over five ways that you can think like a test maker and pass your teacher certification exam. Let's get started. So today I'm here to share with you five specific tips you can use to pass your teacher certification exam. I have found these five ways to be most beneficial for my students when trying to pass their exams. And so you're gonna to wanna to think like a test maker and really take these tips in while you are studying for your test. The first think like a test maker tip I have for you today is to go to your exam blueprint and make sure you understand the structure of the exam. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you're gonna to wanna to Google the name of your exam and the word blueprint or test specification. This is gonna bring up a document that the test makers use when building the exam. So again, you're gonna to wanna to think like a test maker and use their document. These blueprints and test specifications are the most important documents you will find. They are much more beneficial than any study guide. This is the blueprint of the exam. So you're gonna to wanna to get to know this very, very well in and out before you decide on taking your exam. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. You can see that I chose to Google Praxis ESOL test specification, or on this situation, I did Texas EC6 blueprint. These are just two different tests made by two different testing companies, but I'm gonna show you the ways in which they're organized very quickly. So here you can see this is Praxis ESOL, and Praxis is made by the company ETS. All right, and you can see there's always gonna be an ad at the top here, but you wanna to go to the actual test makers website. You can see here, this is ets.org, and this actually has the word PDF next to it. That means it's gonna pull up as a PDF. Now the Texas exams, and yes, I did spell this correctly, they actually call it T-E-X-E-S, that's one of their exam names. Um, the EC6 is basically the elementary ed, and it is built by Pearson Inc. And you will see here it's N-E-S-I-N-C right here, and that stands for National Education Services Inc. And that is Pearson. Again, we have an ad up here, but then underneath I go straight to the test specifications of the testing company. Now, we come to my second tip, which is look for good words in the test specifications, okay? These test specs, all of this information, you will find in the correct answers on the test. The third tip I have for you when preparing for your teacher certification exams is to do the practice test questions that are in their test specifications and blueprint. Now you might say, well, algebra is algebra or you know, grammar is grammar. Yes, it is, but it's helpful to know the way in which it's presented on each individual test. So be sure to do their practice tests on their test specifications and study guides for free on their websites. And the fourth tip I have for you, and probably the most important tip, is to do more than just practice tests over and over again, okay? So I cannot tell you how many of my students email me and say, hey, I did four practice tests over and over again and I didn't pass the test. I would encourage you to think about what you would say to your students in that situation. If your student came to you and said, I took the practice test four times over and over again, and I still didn't pass my history exam. You would say, well, you need to do a little bit more than just do practice test questions over and over again. I understand that it feels good to flip to the back of your study guide and to kind of go through those practice test questions because it's like instant gratification and it feels good to kind of go through and, and circle, you know, the correct answers or whatever. But there is no guarantee that you are going to get the exact same questions from a study guide or even from their website. You have to make sure that you understand the concepts as a whole. So yes, you are going to use practice test questions or uh, practice tests at the end of a study guide to assess your abilities, but really you need to be understanding those concepts in a deeper, more comprehensive way because you don't know what questions you're gonna get asked on the exam. Proportions on a math test could be asked in a word problem, as fractions, with a diagram. You don't know. So if you are just memorizing practice test questions, you are not getting, 
you know, the bulk of what you are going to be assessed on on the exam. So while we want to use the practice test as tools, it is not going to be our sole source of information when studying for the test. So stop doing practice tests over and over again and dig deeper into those concepts so you understand the skills and competencies on your particular exam. And my fifth and final think like a test maker tip for you when passing your teacher certification exam is to study smaller chunks incrementally over time. Now this might be impossible for you because you are a teacher and you have children and when you get home from teaching all day you have to then cook dinner and get your kids ready for bed and all of that stuff but i would suggest make time even if it's 20 minutes a day just to keep your head in the exam every day i find in my experience in doing this many many years that when my students study even if it's 10 to 20 minutes every single day over a longer period of time they do better on the exams than if they cry you know, everything on a weekend, three hours. It's best to, you know, take four or five concepts, look at them, really analyze them, do some practice test questions, analyze why you got it wrong, why you got it right, look at the answer explanations, really dig deep into those concepts. And when you do that 20 minutes a night incrementally or 20 minutes a day during your planning period or whenever you can find time, your head is in the exam for longer periods of time and you're kind of thinking about the exam and thinking about the language on the exam. So I recommend incremental practice over time rather than cramming. Now that being said, some of you have to cram, I understand that, but if you can get in some extended practice, that's gonna be best for your exam preparation. Now remember, you can always go to KathleenJasper.com and make sure you take a look at all of our free and paid resources. We have a ton of free webinars that have all of the information you need for your teacher certification exams, and they even come with study guides and PowerPoints. And then beyond that, we have you know, an array of different study guides here. And we have online courses that are self-paced on demand, full of videos, practice test questions, all the things you need to pass your exams. So be sure to check out KathleenJasper.com. Thank you so much for watching today. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also be sure to tell your colleagues we're here. We wanna help as many teachers as possible. Have a great day.